What's going on people? Mike C Town here. So recently, me and deadandhiphop.com writer Femi Femdog got the opportunity to have a phone conversation with the one and only slug from Atmosphere. While the interview wasn't quite as long as I would have liked, um, I think you guys will enjoy the results, man. It was a pretty pretty cool convo. So uh, check it out. Enjoy it, bitches. How are you, man? Uh, my name is Femi. Uh, Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, you know, so we're part of Dead End Hip Hop. Um, so, you know, we're just going to conduct an interview, talk about Counterpoint Festival, get to know you a little bit, man. So Counterpoint Festival, uh, September 27th to 29th. Uh, like, it's it's a mainly electronic gathering. So uh, what sort of fire are you going to bring for these people? I mean, you know, essentially, especially with electronic festivals, uh, we don't want to get caught up trying to create something that we think is for that audience. Um, what we do is we present who we are because technically the audience gets to experience all the stuff that they came to the festival for with all the other acts. And we are one of the, you know, we're one of the fringe acts at a festival like that. You know what I mean? And so if we were to try to cater to them or to do something outside of who we are just to appeal to them they would see through us you yeah, know what I'm saying do. like they would they, you know and that's never no good so what we try to do is just present who we are and then let them make their mind up about us a lot of times I notice that the people that go to those types of festivals because of you know electronic music encompasses so much you can't really you know even though they got names and genres for, for all kinds of different things inside of the medium, you know, you can't really describe everything that goes into this type of music, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. you know, uh, you got DJs mixing in fucking folk and bluegrass, you got DJs mixing in, in, in mashing up, who knows what, you know what I mean? And so in yeah. that sense, these, these kids tend to be very open-minded, and, and, and therefore that's where our strength shines is that you know if you have an open mind and you're down to listen to what we got to do you know there's a good chance that we're we're going to be able to, to plant our dna with you so you're not at all nervous about playing the type of stuff i know you guys are are you know pretty used to playing bigger hip-hop stuff so is there any I mean, we play everything man you know we, we yeah. no, i'm not nervous to play it we play it you know, Camp Bisco, which was kind of like an electronic beach jam band festival. We played, uh, you know, I mean, we've we played pretty much every festival in the U.S. at this point, that, except for Counterpoint. This was one of the last ones for us to play, you know. And so I'm not I'm not nervous in that sense. I'm more nervous about the fact that it's Atlanta. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, we, we have a history of not... Um, having a very good draw in Atlanta, especially for our own, you know, headlining rap shows. Atlanta has never really been one of our stronger markets. And I'm not complaining, I get it. You know, Atlanta has its own scene. You know, a lot of the places that we get to go, they don't have their own scene. You know what I'm saying? New York does, LA does, Chicago does, uh, Miami does, Atlanta does. You know, the major majors have their own scenes, whereas the rest of us, including my city, Minneapolis, the rest of us all draw from those scenes, and we draw our influences from those scenes. But that's why it can be hard for a group from Minneapolis or a group from fucking Boise, Idaho, you know, to do well in a city like New York or Atlanta or Chicago. Now, we've been fortunate enough to be able to break through Chicago, New York, L.A., San Francisco, Seattle, the major markets. But Atlanta is like the last one where we still play a show and there's still maybe five, six hundred kids come as opposed to two or three thousand, which is what we would get in a New York or in a Los Angeles, we got five thousand, you know. And I know what it is because Atlanta doesn't need atmosphere. Atlanta already has its own thing. You know what I'm saying? They got their own version of atmosphere or their own version of an Aesop rock or their own version of, you know, whatever, a Merce. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. Atlanta has their own scene. And so it's, it's always historically been kind of a hard market for us. So I'm a little nervous about the fact that it's Atlanta. You know, I, and nervous might be the wrong word. I'm more so, I'm curious to see what's going to crack off 
not only is it Atlanta, but it's a, it's a, it's an EDM festival. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm, right. I'm definitely, I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see what how this is going to play itself out. You know what I mean? Either way, I'm going to have fun. You can't stop me from having a good time on stage. Like That's you good. can walk away, <laughs> turn your back on me. It don't matter, man. I'm I'm going to have a good time. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to enjoy myself and to talk some shit. You know what I mean? And so, you know, nothing's going to stop that. But but it, it'll be interesting to see how the audience responds to it. And I don't think it'll be because of what type of festival it is. I think mostly it's it's, it's Atlanta, and that's just a it's a hard place for. If you ain't from Atlanta and you're a rapper, you know, why would, Atlanta don't need no other rappers, man. Y'all got your own rappers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's cool, I man. Understand that. I mean, that, that's the question I always wonder, too. I've seen you guys in Athens and Atlanta, and I know exactly what you mean, but I, I, what you're saying makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even complaining. It's just, that's how life is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, there was a time where if you were a rapper from L.A., you had a hard time building an audience in New York. There was a time where if you were a, a rapper from Minneapolis, you had a hard time building an audience in Chicago, you know, because Chicago got a scene. Uh, uh, New York had a scene, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. Well, Atlanta is like the last place standing that really has a very true scene, a scene to itself that's theirs, and the rest of the world gets to experience and enjoy Atlanta's scene, but Atlanta still owns that scene. You know what I mean? New York can't really say that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, right. backpack rap, which was a New York thing. Backpack rap, you know, blew up and expanded outside of New York. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in LA, gangsta rap blew up. And you, now you got gangsta rappers from St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Atlanta, it's like if you're from there and you make music, you know, because of the deities that are Outcast and the Dungeon Family and then later Luda and then later everybody else that kind of grew under that umbrella, it's unfortunate. Yeah, right. Nobody else Nobody else can make that kind of music the way Atlanta can make that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, it's like, why why do they need any of us? They don't. Now, don't get me wrong, we come play and we still get 500 kids. And don't, that's great. I'm, I'm very fortunate that anybody will come see us, but those kids aren't part of that Atlanta scene. Those kids come from colleges and come from, you know, a different area. They're not, the, the, the kids that go to my show in Atlanta, don't go to the strip clubs in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm pretty sure Mike and I can both say that, you know, like, if we both saw you, you know, we really, really enjoy what you guys were doing. You know, we've, we've always, you know, enjoyed what you guys do. Um, so, I appreciate that. I just have a, a couple of quick personal questions, if you don't mind. Not, not too personal. I'm not going to get up and get up that, but, you know, one thing I've always, I've always noticed about atmosphere is the fact that you guys cover a wide range of topics from love to, to break up to alcoholism but you're one of the only groups I know of that's avoided that emo term why do you think that is I mean I don't think we avoided it I think that we just were the first ones to get it you know in uh, 2002 well here I'll tell you this man in 1998 I was doing an interview with uh, Dave Thompson I don't know if you remember him he was the journalist that did a lot of rap stuff back in the 90s um, okay. used to write for used to write for Rap Pages when Rap Pages was kind of like the sources competition. Um, Dave Thompson did an article on me and some friends of mine, and he asked me to define what kind of music I made. And I told him it was a minimalist, cynical emo rap. And this was before anybody had ever used the term emo rap. And he had printed that shit. I said it as a joke because I worked at a record store at the time, and you know. At record stores, we had to always classify music and put it in genres in the record store to make it easy for people to find the shit. So as a joke, I said that was what kind of rap music I made. He printed the shit, and then a few years later, it, it, it just kind of snowballed into this genre that people started saying emo rap. You know, and technically, it was like nobody could ever really define what the shit meant. You know, technically, I always saw Tupac space these dudes is very emotional rappers you know you can hear it in their voices and so to me that was emo rap um and so around 2004 spin magazine did a story about emo rap and they used me as the main dude that was like 2003 actually 2003 2004 i don't remember um but they talked about me plus 65 all the anaconda dudes they talked about uh basically all of the 
lighter, or I should say pale skinned underground rappers at the time. But they threw in a couple of brothers too, like first. Uh, but, but basically, you know, they did this, what they thought was like this expose on emo rap, even though they were like five years late on it already. And then it's funny because after they did that, then it, the, the term got picked up and used by the, the masses. And then you started having like gangster rappers dissing emo rappers and wow. mainstream rappers shitting on the idea of emo rap. And it's really funny to me because it all came from a joke that we made way back in the 90s. Crack, we cracked this dumbass joke and it, it grew from there. Now, people use the term to talk about different rappers, but they don't throw me in the bucket anymore. Probably just because I've outgrown it. You know, the same way you probably don't call Karis one a backpack rapper anymore. Because, you know, he he's been around for so fucking long that it just doesn't even make sense. You just call him a golden era rapper or some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Even though yeah, he right. probably is one of the original backpack rappers or, or, or a buckshot from Black Boom. Definitely one of the original quote unquote backpack rappers. You know what I'm saying? But nobody right. ever says his name when they talk about backpack rap anymore. You know what I mean? Or Scooby D, gangster rapper. But when they talk about gangster rap, nobody even brings him up unless you're unless you're intentionally trying to talk about the roots of it. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so it's, I think that's why nobody really calls me emo rap anymore. It's just because Aperture has outgrown it. In fact, we've kind of outgrown. You can't really call us shit anymore. We're just a thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I, I don't know, you know, it's just rap at this point. It's just, we, we, we've gone back around to it just being rap because nobody really knows what to classify atmosphere as anymore. Especially after we started working with instruments and shit. People just, people seem to get confused easily. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I can't sit around and worry about other people's confusion or whatever. I just got to keep keep it moving but, but truthfully I never really cared what the fuck they want to label it as I don't give a fuck call it emo rap call it prom core I don't give a shit you know what I'm saying like <laughs> whatever it is kind of true because you know like uh Every time something new comes out, people always want to try to categorize it, put it in a box just so that they can understand it. And, you know, the harder it is to do something, like the more animosity it gets. So, you know, I can really understand what you're talking about. So my question is, uh, you know, we like people get asked this question a lot, but, you know, it, it really, really helps just to see perspectives from a lot of people. So. I want to know, what do you think about the state of hip-hop, good, bad? What is the state of hip-hop? How is it in your eyes? I mean, I think it's amazing right now, you know? Especially, we went through an era where corporations were throwing so much fucking money at rap that it kind of watered it down a lot. Um, and, and, I, and I'm not going to blame any artists for it. It's yeah. just... You know, it's just, it's just life, especially in a capitalist society. How could it not happen? But in the mid-90s, you know, when Puffy was on top of the world, um, when Wu-Tang had, the, had the, the rugged shit just locked up and yeah. the West Coast was cracking, you know, when, when every everything was just really cracking off big, corporations started throwing tons of money at it and it started to wane. It started to get really thin. You know what I'm saying? That the yeah. music that was coming out was becoming really thin. It didn't mean nothing anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I don't mean to say that in such a generalized way, but I'm generalized. Mm -hmm. And now, if you talk to like music industry people or a lot of journalists, everybody says the same thing. Oh, rap, it's on its way out. Nobody cares about rap anymore. Oh, you know, uh, Duff Step is the big shit now. Country music is big. Uh, uh, indie rock is more fun because it's experimental and this and that. Good. I'm glad motherfuckers feel that way because when people take their eyes away from what's going on in hip hop, so do the corporations. Mm -hmm. And those corporations can go feed on the other genres. And at the same time, if you look at what's going on in hip hop, it's more creative than ever right now. You got these dudes from New York. Uh, the ASAP crew, they sound like down south music and they're, they're, they're chopping and screwing their shit and they're making this weird, really eccentric gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? And then you got fucking Lil B's crazy ass. <laughs> uh, some kind of, it's a phenomenon happening because of the internet. Then yeah, you got, man. you know, artists like ASAP Rock having the best first week sales he's ever had in his career. 
And so it's like, okay, so if rap is on its way out, why is it so exciting? Odd Future? Mm-hmm. Listen, man, it's not for me. Odd Future is not for me. But why should it be? I'm fucking 40 years old. They're yeah. not making music for me. Yeah. But they're making music that scares old white people. And that's exactly what hip-hop is supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I think hip-hop is in a great place right now. And I think that part of that is because the powers that be think it's on its way out the door. Mm-hmm. So it's given us room be creative and do what we want without having to fit inside of any kind of box. Fools are making music without worrying about who's going to buy it. They're making music and they're paying attention to what they're doing. You know what I mean? And I think that's fucking dope. Um, You know, it's funny, like, I look at at the Odd Future thing and and, and people all have opinions on it. But I'm like, man, when I was 18, Mm -hmm. Easy E was my shit. Like, I loved Easy E. Now, you know, now as an adult, I can look back on the EVE time and go, okay, you know, he wasn't changing the world with his raps. He was he was dirty. He was like Blowfire, Richard Pryor, and some shit like that. Yeah, but yeah. my parents hated the fact that I loved it. And I think that Odd Future is filling that niche right that now. Word. You know what I'm saying? The easy, easy niche. And then, you know what else? Look at this, man. A few years ago, it was, you could easily argue that Kanye West and Lil Wayne were probably in the top 10 pop icons of the moment. And if you think about that, now we're talking pop icons, we're talking about, this is a place where your Britney Spears has been, where your Christina Aguilera, all the way back to a place where your Frank Sinatra has been. We're talking about icons. There was a time, we saw a time where Lil Wayne and Kanye West were in that icon. They might even still be, I don't even know, but there was at least this moment where they were in this icon territory. And if you think about that, not many weirdos get to be an icon, okay? Yeah. We had two from the hip-hop community because they're both pretty eccentric and weird. Yeah. So when you got Kanye and Lil Wayne, even though me and you, you know, we might argue about what their role in hip-hop is or whatever, but just in the world of pop culture, you can't argue about what role they played. They yeah. played a role that made it cool for urban kids to let their freak flags fly. And that's an amazing thing because when I was younger, City kids weren't allowed to dress weird. They weren't allowed to ride skateboards. They weren't allowed to do these things that these kids are all able to do now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think our future is a direct result of Lil Wayne and Kanye and people becoming more accepting of black kids being weird too. You know, because for years, it was only the white kids that got to be weird. And, and once in a while, there'd be the one odd black kid that would hang out with the white kids and ride a skateboard and be weird. But now... It's like, we, we opened all the fences, man. All these kids get to go and just figure out who the fuck they are on their own without these boxes confining them. And if you think about these boxes, mm-hmm. these boxes were created by art and corporations. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That they're being mm-hmm. torn between the two, between art and corporations. And so I got to give Kanye and Lil Wayne a lot of credit for helping tear down some of those fences. And who knows, you know, we might not really see it for another 20 years, but... At some point, we're going to be able to trace that shit back to these two weird-ass motherfucking pop icons. You know what I'm saying? Just like Marilyn mm-hmm. Manson. Just like, you know, we, we once in a while, you get a weirdo up inside of the pop realm. Mm-hmm. And we got to have two at the same time representing us. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like that's, that's heavy shit. I, I don't know if I'd call uh, Kanye weird, but I, I can definitely see because, you know, he's... Like, yeah, he's eccentric. definitely, uh, definitely eccentric. I mean, like he he does whatever he wants to do, and you know, if you don't like yeah. it, well, too bad. You know, just just keep moving. Like, so and so that's probably what I really mean to say. Yeah, it's yeah. Eccentric. Because I, I when we place him next to, well, let's let's look at it like this though. Place Kanye next to Fifty Cent, Rick Ross, and Drake. Yeah. And Kanye's definitely weird. Yeah. He definitely looks weird when you put him next to those three. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, what yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's not. I don't mean he's weird. I don't mean he's wearing a chicken suit. Yeah, or yeah, I know, I know, but I, I just know. mean he's like he, he lets his freak flag fly a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think that's important because for years, man, they told the city kids that they weren't allowed to be freaks. Man, city kids had to be thugs. Mm-hmm. So, and now it's okay for city kids to read comic books again. You know what I'm saying? Like I just feel yeah, like yeah, man, yeah. That's, that's real slick. That's real. That's real tight to me. You know, I feel like it's gonna make for good music over the next. 10 years. It's making hip hop more of an art again versus just a money making business tool. I can completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because Kanye and Wayne are both money making business tools, but 
new one since them existing, it's going to have, I think, effects on the rest of the community that allows us to kind of, you know, I mean, I, I really do think you could trace Odd Future to Kanye and Lil Wayne. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and, 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 and let's face it, Odd Future's not making pop music by any fucking means, but they're getting people's attention by just doing what the fuck they wanted to. Yeah. And that, it's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Make your story out of nothing and get, and get attention for it. That's that's the shit to me. If, even if you go back all the way to the seventies, like rappers delight, you know, when when they were rapping over that, that disco track, I mean that was that was probably like burning a car in the middle of the city, you know? Like it was just so raw. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I, I, I can totally you know? see I can totally see what you're saying, you know. Uh, Mike, do you have anything else to say, man? Well, fuck, I don't want to hold you up, man. I'll just ask you this last thing. We're going to be interviewing Brother Ali on Friday. Is there anything you want to pass along to him? Man, I don't know. I mean, I talk to him pretty regularly, so there ain't a whole lot to pass to him. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to say that to him. I, I, I will probably speak to him within the next three hours. You know, we talk on the phone a lot. If you want to give him a hug for you, I'll definitely do that. Just give him a hug, because it'll be a month before I see him again. So just give him a hug. Okay. Will do. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. Man, Slug, I, I really, really appreciate this, man. Like, you, you are totally one of my favorite uh, when it comes to, like, this style of hip-hop, man. Thank you, man. Thank um, you, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, I wish you all the best. Keep doing what you do. Don't stop. Right, yeah, man. Have a, have, a, have a great afternoon, you guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Peace out. Peace.